remain underrepresented in leadership positions across all sectors. We asked leaders in development what advice they would give to women wanting to take on a leadership role. This notion of heroic leadership that I've used that, that you know, is deeply patriarchal and it represents a patriarchal way of, of being and, it's, and it inhabits all of us. This isn't about men who you know, got the patriarchal model and women haven't. So you know, the, I think any of us that are in big systems, and if we're talking about leaders want to, women want to become leaders, we might be talking about within big systems and usually they're very patriarchal in the way they work. There's not a lot of space for collaborative leadership, emergent leadership, you know, real authentic, uh, an authentic bringing of ourselves into those spaces. So I think they're questions for women and men, um, but obviously men are still very powerful in decision making. So yeah, it's first wave feminism versus second wave feminism. So first wave feminism is how can we succeed within this existing system and second wave feminism has been asking forever, how do we transform it, whether they're Marxist feminists or radical feminists that see the predominant problem as patriarchy or the capitalist economy. They both bring in different frameworks. Um, you know, and men who are in this space are asking exactly the same questions. It's very true that women are underrepresented and in most leadership uh, positions. And the advice that I would give a woman in terms of the direction that they're seeking to go in terms of leadership positions, it's don't be scared, go for it. Believe in yourself and trust in yourself. I think as a woman, when you start comparing yourself to a man and saying a man can do this and a man can do that, then you hold yourself back in that sort of situation. For me, I would, um, it, it, it requires a lot of self-confidence. And when you project yourself as a woman that you can do, then it's very easy for your audience as well to believe in you. But if you come from a position whereby I'm disadvantaged, I come from a less situation, people will always see you in that sort of perspective of that sort of life, light. So I would say from the beginning, have the self-confidence and project that. Don't be afraid to speak about the needs of women. So um, we, in different situations, we have different, um, the environment has to be suited for, um, has to be not necessarily suited, but we have probably different needs, like family needs that would require us probably to maybe leave work earlier, come in later, negotiate for that, for that sort of situations. I think um, what we sometimes fail to do um, in, our, in, our, in our work situations as women is that recognize that we need to be at our best in the family situation to give our best in the office situation. So in those kind of situations, uh, one size doesn't fit all in all circumstances. Negotiate and speak about what best works for you so that you're able to give, you're able to give um, your best. Um, the other thing is that work with a group of women, yeah, um, the support group to help you. I mean, you could either have as mentors, as, as your peers, but a, a support group of women that would be able to support you as you try and move up the leadership circles. And as well, again, the thing that um, sometimes we fail as women when we're trying to champion or are trying to uh, progress ahead is that we don't get the support of men. So they are very, they are men in different situations that are very positive towards um, supporting women to progress into leadership circles. Build that sort of um, support that you have around you with men and women at the same time, and use men to be champions for you, to advocate for your needs so that you're able to move and progress as a woman who wants to progress to different leadership circles. So look at it differently, step out of your box, look at your environment, where can you gain support from, of course, um, your um, supporters within you, those who would not be your supporters, but looking at that in terms of how can you work past, past that to be able to get support of that. At the same time, at times you don't get support from ourselves as women as well. So look at that perspective and see why would another woman not be able to give you that support? What could you do extra? How could you be able to get that support from another woman to help you progress in that sense? So looking at all stakeholders around you and seeing how you can progress around that is what I would, I would suggest. As a woman, never be scared to negotiate and speak up for your needs that best suit your situation. That's what I would say. I would say the first thing I would think of is know your terrain 
I mean, whether you want to be in politics and governance or whether you want to be in the corporate world and on boards, you have to know your terrain. You have to know what the obstacles to women's leadership in these different areas are. So that would be my first advice. You have to know what the challenges are to having more women in positions, either in the private sector or in the public sector. Identify them, um, whether it's an issue of culture, because in, in our case in Nigeria, a lot of times it's just plain patriarchy. Whether it's uh, the, the use of religion, interpretation of religious text, and in Nigeria we successfully do that with both the Bible and the Quran. We use verses from both religious texts to keep women out of leadership positions, saying that our religions don't allow um, for women in leadership positions, never mind that in, 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 in the in Islamic context we have Pakistan and Indonesia as examples of where women have led and they've been Muslims. Um, so you have to understand your barriers to leadership in your terrain. So I think that's a key one. In Nigeria, for the political, for people who want to go into politics, it would be that, again, politics in Nigeria is the biggest business. It's the most lucrative business. It's the fastest way to be wealthy. And so the men want to keep the space to themselves naturally. So you're, you're up against not just culture and patriarchy, you're also up against practical considerations like this is the fastest way to make money and men want to be the one to make money. It's not about service per se, it's about getting a piece of the pie. And so if you understand the context within which you're, you're struggling to achieve, it'll be easier for you. The second one I'd say is be on top of your game. I say that to women all the time when I was in the Women's Trust Fund as, as Chief Executive Officer. You have to bring something to the table. If women are the ones who are out and not on the table, we can be like the men. So for example, in Nigeria, the educational qualifications to be a member of parliament to make laws is to have a secondary school living certificate. It doesn't even say that you have to have A's or anything, just to say you have the certificate. So that's a very low education qualification. And I'm quite sure that if women wanted to contest, they would probably have to have more than just the minimum to prove themselves. So again, that's being on top of your game, understanding your area, having a niche, I tell women. You want to be in a position where, whether it's in the, on the board or in, in politics, where when people think of an issue, they think of you almost automatically. If they're going to think of three people, they'll think of you as one of those three people. So you have to sort of create a name for yourself. You have to work hard. You can't be like the men. The men can afford to be sloppy and take things you know, at ease. Women have to work 10 times harder. And I'm sure people like Hillary Rodham Clinton have lots of stories to share about how hard they've worked to get to where they are. You, I think it's also key to get a network of like-minded men and women. Um, you find that there are many women, men as well and women who understand why women should be in leadership. The same way you'll find men and women who don't think women should be in leadership. What you need to do is find a network of those like minds because in the end you become some sort of support group. You can recommend each other for positions when you have the chance to do that. You can share learnings, you can be some sort of st support and network uh, and a source of information. So I think that's also very key. I think women who want to be in leadership also have to be ready to be out there. You can't want to be in leadership, whether it's on the board or whether it's in, in the private sector or public sector in government, and be shy of the media or shy of the cameras or shy of sharing your opinions. You, you actually have to be a bit opinionated, not in a bad way, but in a way that shows I have thoughts, I have thought about this thing, and I'm not scared of saying it in front of the cameras. I think that's very key. In my part of the world, women are very shy of the media. They're very reluctant to come out openly. They don't want to be in the firing line. And it's quite understandable, but it's a double-edged sword. You stay out of the limelight when people are thinking of women who are in leadership positions, and they're thinking of even men who are in leadership positions. They're unlikely to think about you if nobody's heard what, you've, what you think and you've not put yourself out there. So I tell women, write. If you think your talent is in writing, you know, pick up a pen, write an, an article, opinion write open letters, men are always doing that. You know, do put, put yourself out there and make yourself an expert or a thought leader in one aspect of, of, of work and, and flog it to death. And then I'll say the last thing is contribute to tackling the negative stereotypes and narratives about women in leadership. There are many out there in different cultures and different contexts. I think women have a duty to work together to deliberately counter these narratives. Like for example, when I was in Women's Trust Fund, we created, we got a grant to create a very short video. Um, Nollywood, which is our Hollywood in Nigeria, is very, very big. Um, people all across Africa watch our movies. And I thought, you know, we're not having, we don't, we're not seeing enough of these films with a message of empowerment for women. So we had this very short movie type, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 
where it showed a woman who had suffered a loss in her community and how she tried to translate that tragedy into wanting to represent her community and do more for her community so that people could start seeing a link about women not being just victims but you know could 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 spin what had happened to them to something positive so i think generally women should challenge those stereotypes with islam for example that i mentioned there's many many um progressive imams and, and scholars who have done pieces on women's leadership share that openly you know so things like that i think in addition to all the other things that women do um, women should consider also working to change the narrative in a more broader way